Hey, what's up YouTube? This is True Hero coming to you with another video. Breaking away from my hero mantra, I'm coming at you guys with a Dark Magician video. Uh, Dark Magician was my first card way back when I picked up Starter Deck Yugi, um, back in the day to say the least. Um, so I was super hyped when I found out that he was getting some support and super excited to hear that it might actually have been playable. So I've been playtesting the deck um, and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about my build, a little bit about my experiences, as well as some of the key components of the deck and what makes it so effective. Um, answer to some questions, do I think it's effective? Actually yes. Um, against a lot of decks, um, a Dark Magician deck nowadays presents a lot of problems for the simple fact that Secret Village of the Spellcasters, which for those of you that don't know, if you have a Spellcaster on field, your opponent can't use spell cards. If you control no Spellcaster type monsters, you can't activate spell cards. Um, and for a long time, this card was kind of a, um, a dual-edged sword because the moment that your opponent got um, your Spellcasters off field, depending on what archetype you're running, especially Dark Magician, it was down near impossible to get him back on board. Not impossible, but definitely very difficult. And what's nice about the new support that's coming out for Dark Magician is that it really makes the your job as a player to keep Dark Magician on board much, much easier. And that's because he's much easier to search, much easier to get on field, and again, much easier to protect and revive him if need be. So you're going to jump into the video uh, right now. Right off the bat, you're going to see how effective uh, just the simple uh, the simple Secret Village of the Spellcasters, Spellcaster Monster on Field, um, is against just locking certain decks out of doing anything, um, especially when you have decent back row. Um, that is one for my first note that I'll make to you guys, is back row in this deck is pretty essential. Uh, I run triple, triple Solemn Strike, one Solemn Warning. Uh, I run... Triple uh, Storming Mirror Force, I believe, and of course Bottomless Trap Hole because staples.com. Um, trademark, not actually advertising for staples. YouTube, please do not try to shut me down for that. Um, but anyway, so as you see, I'm just, I'm doing a pretty basic, um, keep my spellcaster as safe as humanly possible, uh, doing that with things like Solemn Warning and Solemn Notice, keeping my opponent as bay for as long as possible, as best as possible. Um, you'll see I even switched my uh, Apprentice Illusion Magician into defense mode just for the simple fact that I don't know what he has and I didn't want to risk running into a Mirror Force and having both my monsters swept off field. Uh, because again, you need to keep Secret Village up and you need to keep it working for you essentially. So keeping one Spellcaster on field at all times is basically your go-to. That is going to be um, your play style. Is keep spellcasters on, keep spellcasters on field, and protect them with your life. Um, and right now, you're going to see the effectiveness of one of the support cards, uh, Eternal Soul. This card is the deck's bread and butter, and I love it because it's searchable with Magician's Rod. It is also searchable. Um, not necessarily searchable, but you can also um, pull into it using Dark Magic Circle, which you guys will get a look at in a second. But essentially, Eternal Soul, if you haven't already gotten a look at the card, um, Special Summon once per turn, Special Summon one Dark Magician from Hand or Graveyard, uh, which basically means you can Special Summon him on board, and then once he leaves, um, and then if he leaves next turn during your opponent's turn, during their end phase or the end of their battle phase, Special Summon right back to the field which is really important with Secret Village of the Spellcasters because, again, this card essentially guarantees that you'll always be able to pull your Dark Magician back onto board during your or your opponent's turn, which, which means you'll always have a Spellcaster to keep Secret Villages working for you and against your opponent. Now, um, the other effects of Eternal Soul are once per turn, you can add one Dark Magician attack or Thousand Eyes from your hand to deck. If you don't know already, Dark Magician attack is Harpy's Feather Duster if you have Dark Magician on field. And there is a reason that card is banned, guys. Um, finally, all Dark Magician monsters in your monster zone are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. If this card leaves the field, destroy all monsters you control. First of all, the fact that Dark Magician can't be affected by any monster effects trap effects or spell effects 
is ridiculous. That basically means that they have to throw out a monster with over 2,500 attack points just to clear it off board. And what's awesome about that is again, going back to the first effect, if they pop my Dark Magician off board, I can just summon him back at the end of the battle phase before their main phase two gets started and before they have the opportunity to go use any of their spell cards to pull out any boss monsters, do any searching or drawing, etc. Now the final effect about Eternal Soul, um, of course with all of the things that it does, all of the opportunities it offers to the deck, it makes sense that it would have a pretty big drawback. Uh, if it wasn't, I would be the first advocate to say uh, this card is broken. Um, but what's kind of neat about this is if you have two Eternal Souls, which you guys will get to see later in the video, if you have two Eternal Souls, if one gets popped, one will, the other will keep your Dark Magician from being affected by the other's effect that would clear it off board. So having two on field isn't a bad thing, uh, it just offers your Dark Magician further support, which is, again, awesome. Um, and of course, playing it in conjunction with Secret Village of the Spellcasters means that your opponent can't just use simple ways of getting it off, like Mystical Space Typhoon or Twin Twisters. Um, and going into this, you'll see uh, I Special Summon Dark Magician during my uh, during his end phase, I'm sorry, during my opponent's end phase, so that I can use the effect of uh, Eternal Soul later on to go into my Dark Magic Attack. Now, um, you'll notice that I didn't play Dark Magic Attack, and that's because I thought about you guys while I was making this video, uh, and I wanted to show off the effectiveness of Eternal Soul in the event that you couldn't clear off his back row. So you see that I swung into uh, an opponent's Mirror Force um, that he just threw, his last turn, and while it managed to pop off my Magician's Rod, Dark Magician is kept safe because of Eternal Soul. So the attack goes through, um, and that is just GG right there. Uh, and going into the next video, you guys will get the chance to see how Dark Magician is effective going second. So in this video, same Red Eyes deck, uh, my opponent immediately goes into a boss monster. He doesn't want to have to worry about Dark Magician um, or Secret Village of the Spellcasters, rather, locking him out of the game, locking him out of using his resources um, as best as possible. I'm using Shadals, A, because they're Spellcasters, B, because they are obnoxious. Uh, I will be the first to say I hated Shadals when they came out. Uh, I think they ruined the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! The game has never been the same since, uh, but I hated Shadals. Uh, but I do use them in the disc. I use uh, four Shadal cards in this deck. I run Triple Shadal Dragon, one El Shadal Fusion. Um, and I use that A because, as you just saw, Shadal Dragon's really good for popping off uh, troublesome cards off the field. And again, if need be, I can throw him down as a 19k beater and he use him to help keep Secret Village of the Spellcasters alive and kicking. As you guys can see, I currently have two Eternal Souls flipped up, and like I just mentioned, that's because if one gets popped, the other will keep uh, my Dark Magician from dying. And here, you're going to get the opportunity to see how Eternal Soul is effective in terms of keeping Dark Magician on field and keeping him, uh, I'm sorry, keeping Secret Village of the Spellcasters effective. Every time my opponent pops my Dark Magician out on the field, even after I crashed my own Dark Magician into his monster to clear his board, uh, Eternal Souls just pops Dark Magician right back on field before he has the chance to use any of his spell cards, uh, Raigeki or uh, Red, Eyes, uh, Red Eyes Fusion. It could have been other cards. Man could have had Pot of Desires. He could have, had, he could have been playing Pot of Greed. It doesn't matter because um, Eternal Souls essentially keeps my Dark Magician on board, which keeps Secret Village of the Spellcasters alive and keeps him from utilizing his resources to the best of his ability. Uh, this game kind of went on for a bit, uh, again, because we kind of hit this cycle of, I'm going to kill your Dark Magician now. Huh, no you're not. Surprise, mother... Oh, uh, let me keep it clean in case like some kid comes and watches this. Um, but uh, we kind of enter this cycle where he's trying to kill my Dark Magician. I won't let that happen, obviously, because protectthespellcaster.com. Um, but finally, I get to go into, I get to go into something a little bit bigger. Uh, throwback to when E-Dragons were King of the Jungle. Uh brought out Big Eye, took over his Red Eyes, and from there, it was pretty much game over. And that's, again, because he couldn't utilize the resources that he normally would um, to get over this kind of field or to get off, uh, get off a boss monster to get over my own. Uh, if you guys are wondering what this deck looks like when it's faced up with a Tier 1 deck, 
again, of course you're going to have archetypes that don't really care about their spell cards being uh, being affected, uh, namely Burning Abyss. That's the one that I've had the most trouble with so far um, because, again, they don't really mind about their spell cards. They just... Uh, they really just want to use their monster effects and use the trap effects. Uh, so with some siding, though, this deck is fairly effective against that. I'm pausing here because I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge what just happened because I didn't even realize what was going on until my opponent pointed it out to me. So when I swung into his maiden, I was fully ready to just use my bottom list just to pop off uh, the blue eyes he was going to summon. And when my opponent didn't summon it, I asked what happened. I was wondering if it was a technical issue. And he explained to me that Eternal Soul prevents my Dark Magician from being affected by any effects. So he couldn't even negate my monster's attack, which basically meant he just took 2,500 to the face. Um, and again, it just goes to show the importance of this card and the importance of having uh, search cards for it like Magician's Rod, like uh, Dark Magic Circle to help pull it from the deck. Uh, it really goes, and uh, so not only do you guys get, not only are you guys getting to see how effective it is in terms of keeping Dark Magician on field, you're also getting the opportunity to see how it can be used offensively as well. And again, that was GG. My opponent really couldn't do much. Um, we played other, I played a few other games with that guy, and uh, it kind of all boiled down to the same thing. Once I got Secret Village and Eternal Soul going, he just had so many issues getting off. And I got one more game for you guys because I'm sure many of you guys are wondering, okay, all right, Hero, calm down. What about a deck that just is ridiculous in terms of the pace, in terms of how rapidly it throws monsters on board? This is game two against uh, Magic Spectre Pendulums. I won game one off of, uh, <laughs> he went to basically do what he did this turn, which is Pendulum summon all his monsters, and I solemn striked him. He got salty and uh, scooped. So this is game two. Uh, he went first, and of course, he immediately summons off his unicorn, gets his field off, and uh, and I take a significant amount of damage. I started off significantly slower. Um, some of you guys are going to say this is a heart of the cards moment, where I drew into uh, my Apprentice Illusion Magician. You could say it was heart of the cards, but I run three Apprentice Illusion Magician. I run three Dark Magician. And I run double Dark Magic Current, which means 8 out of 33 cards were going to give me a way to put Dark Magician into my hand. Um, and oh, I'm sorry, and I also run triple Dark Magic Circle. So that was 12 ways that I could have gotten uh, Dark Magician into my hand out of 33 cards. I just kind of played the odds. The odds worked out in my favor. Uh, and because of what just happened... Now, I finally get to put a Spellcaster on board, but I had to be a little crafty. So I swing into his Karin. Um, he goes to remove uh, my Apprentice Illusion off field, so I use Eternal Soul, still in my battle phase, huh, quick effect, um, to summon Dark Magician and then finish off the attack and kill his Karin. And now, this is where things get fun. So I use El Shadal Fusion because my one of El Shadal Fusion, because his Castell is still on board, and bring out El Shadal Window. And I just want to point out this board to you guys. He can't special summon more than once per turn next turn. He won't be able to use spell cards once I throw down Secret Village and Spellcasters. And even if he got out a boss monster, he's got a Dark Magician that he has to get rid of, but can only get rid of via attacks. And it can just revive itself at the end of his battle phase. This is the kind of feel that this board, that this deck is capable of. And this board is capable of being made basically from the abyss. I was a sneeze away from losing this game. He could have blown, he could have just like sneezed on me or coughed on me and I was going to die. Um, so I just want to show off the deck, uh, the deck's capabilities in terms of coming back late game and things of that nature. This is the deck as it stands right now. Again, I'm playing with it. Yes, I am running one Sorcerer of Dark Magic. I never really got to use him, but he doesn't hurt the deck either. And that's again because I run to Allure of Darkness and Apprentice Illusion Magician needs a card to get pitched uh, in order to special summon herself and then again, uh, of course, in order to um, search Dark Magician. So he doesn't hurt the deck. He's kind of just, um, he's there if I can use him. And if I can't use him, he's good for pitching for cost effects. 
Uh, only running one El Shadal Fusion because I'm only running three Shadal Dragons and also because it's not a card I want to open with because uh, from my experience when I'm going first, um, going first, I don't really get to use it to its full potential because my opponent won't have an, an extra deck monster on field and I don't want to use monsters and cards that uh, my resources that are in my hands and on field to pop off a monster. Uh, staples in the deck, of course, Triple Dark Magician, uh, Triple Apprentice Illusion Magician when she comes out, Triple Magician's Rod, because this card is going to allow you to search out your Eternal Soul and your Dark Magic Circle, which, again, will help you search out your Eternal Soul and your Dark Magician. Uh, I only have double terraforming. Some people are like, why don't you throw in the third? Um, back in the Dark Ages of Heroes, I was trying a build that wasn't Electrum uh, OTK, uh, I was just running straight um, Fusion Gate Beatdown, and my experience is that running triple terraforming, uh, the card often gets super cloggy. You'll have so many instances where you open with double terraforming or terraforming and your field spell. When you're drawing late game, you draw into it, and it's absolutely useless. Um, so ever since then, I've stopped playing triple terraforming. If I ever need to use it, I only run two. So that's the deck. Let me know what you guys think. I uh, can't wait to your hands. And uh, of course, um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Hey, what's going on, guys? If you're new to the channel, this is True Hero. And I'll always leave this uh, portion of the video at the end. Um, in case you don't know, I work at a card shop, Wake Forest Hobby, in Wake Forest, North Carolina, where we sell Yu-Gi-Oh cards uh, in honor of my Dark Magician deck. I'm just showing off you guys Dark Magic Circle, mint condition. We pulled it, threw it straight in a loader to maintain its condition. Uh, we have a playset going up, so if you're anxiously waiting for uh, Dark Magician support to finish coming out for Apprentice Illusion uh, Magician, uh, get it while you can. Um, and I will leave a link for this card. And if you are wondering, we do have additional cards up for sale. Ha ha ha. Uh, my boss sells uh, sport cards. He's in the sport department of this uh, card shop. But we do have other cards. We have a few staples going up. Uh, we have some Phantom Knights if you're running that. Uh, but again, um, we have Dark Magic Circle going up, Magician Navigation, which is further Dark Magician support, and of course, Floodgate Trap Hole. We actually have two playsets of Floodgate Trap Hole. Uh, if you guys are interested, we have two, again, two play sets of that going up. So get them while you can. I will leave a link for this card up. And thank you for watching. And again, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.